بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم. I want to remind you, brothers and sisters, about a hadith that gives us a concept in the religion of Islam, and it is a very useful hadith and a useful concept, especially in seasons and occasions like Ramadan, where we're searching for good deeds and we're trying to get rewarded by Allah Azza wa and that is the statement of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam from his Jawami' al kalim لا تحقرن شيئا من المعروف Do not look at anything which is a good deed, no matter how insignificant it is. Do not look at it as being a small thing. Don't see it and view it as being insignificant, trivial. Anything that is ma'roof, it is beneficial. And it is looked at in the religion and viewed by the religion as being something that only Allah knows the actual weight and reward that has been prepared for the one who does that particular thing. So some people, especially in the me, myself, and I society and time in which we're living, we want to focus on the wow factor. When in fact, the Muslim has been encouraged, take care of the small things and the big things, they will take care of themselves. And if anyone were to do ma'roof for you or you were to do ma'roof for or towards anyone, do not look at it as being insignificant, especially since Allah Azza wa is Al-Kabir, and Allah Azza wa He is Al-Azim, and Allah Azza wa He is Al-Jaleel. So what did the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam tell us in an issue like in Ramadan, and the things that we can do in being in a race to do good. And this is what we want to talk to you about. Allah said in the Quran concerning the people, Yomul Qiyam and how He would judge them, La Yudlamuna Fatila. They will not be oppressed by a fatil. The scholars have different opinions and interpretations. What is the meaning of this word as it relates to the ayat? One of the meanings of the word fatil is that little string that is embedded in the middle of the date. If you take the seed from the date and you pull that little string out, that's a fatil, something that is small, something that is insignificant. No one's going to pay attention to it. If it's there, you'll take it and you throw it away. So Allah Azza wa Jal said, the people yomul qiyamati in this dunya as well by Allah, they will not be oppressed in the smallest thing, in the most insignificant thing, in the most trivial thing, in the smallest way, there will be no zulm coming from Allah Azza wa Jal. So this is the month of Ramadan, the month of dates. The Prophet told us Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to eat dates for the suhoor because it is a suhoor that has barakah, the dates themselves. He would break his fast on dates. When a baby would be born, he sallallahu alayhi wasallam would do the tahniq. He would give the baby some sweetness from the date that had been chewed up. So the day has a significant role to play in the religion, especially in the month of Ramadan. As it relates to these dates, Allah will not oppress a person by the fatil, by something that's insignificant or that's small. So what did the Prophet tell us? Sallallahu alayhi wa ala alayhi wa sallam and keep him with this advice that I'm trying to share with you that I'm encouraging you to think about he said sallallahu alayhi wa ala alayhi wa sallam to a man from his companions ridwanullahi alayhim ajma'een ittaqillah walaw bishak tamra he said fear the hell of fire even if it's with and by a date half of a date fear the hell of fire even if it is by half of a date and the person can fear the hellfire by using a date or half of a date in many ways. Look what happened with our mother, Al Humaira, Bintu Siddiq, Um Abdullahi, Aisha, Radiallahu Anha, Wa Radiallahu An Abiha, Abi Bakr al Siddiq. A poor lady came to the house of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam only to find Aisha was at home by herself. She had her two daughters with her. One was to the right and the other one was to the left. When Aisha opened up the door, the lady asked Aisha, do you have anything to eat that you can give? Fisa I'm hungry. 
My daughters are hungry. Aisha told the lady, okay, wait one minute, hold on. And then she went inside of the house of Nabuwa. She looked all around and all she was able to find was one date, one date, which gives you an indication of the level of poverty that the Prophet and his household had to endure, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, wa radiyallahu anhunna. May Allah be pleased with his Ahlul Bayt for their sabr that they used to have and they used to exemplify having to live that lifestyle. When she came back, she gave the lady the one date, one date to be shared between all three of them. Someone would look at that as being insignificant. And if it happened during our time, the one who was asking for help, they have nothing. But if someone came and gave them just one date, they're going to think that the person was having istihza. They were taking them as a fool, joking with them. Are you serious? One date? But that lady, she was from the Shakirat. She took the date and she split it in half. She gave one half to one daughter, the other half to the other daughter, and she left. When the Prophet ﷺ came home, Aisha told him about the incident. Radiallahu anha. Prophet Muhammad was impressed and he gave instructions and dawah and he educated Aisha and us as a result. And this is how he used to do. He used to educate people about everything, every opportunity, a dawah Allah. He said, Ya Aisha, that one date that you gave that lady and she split it in half and gave a portion to each daughter, that one date is going to be a hijab from the hellfire for that lady. It's going to be a partition from the hellfire. That action of hers, that tathiyya, the sacrifice of the mother. The mother could have ate the date. She could have split it into thirds, but she was looking out for her babies. She split that, gave it to the children, and as a result of that, that one date will be a partition. It will be a veil. It will be a protection for the mother from the hellfire. And he said it would also be a protection for you, Aisha. One date protects two people from the hellfire. So with that, I say to you, don't look at any deed as being insignificant in the month of Ramadan specifically. Take the dates and break the fast of the people. A person here in the UK is fasting 18 and a half hours and he eats your dates. You get the reward of fasting all of those hours in addition to your own fast. Or maybe you're not even fasting. You're not even fasting. The lady is not fasting. The man is not fasting. But he gives money or he makes it possible, she makes it possible for people to break fast upon the date or the food that they provided. So this is the point that I want to bring to your attention. As it relates to the weightiness of one day in the scale, when you're standing there for taraweeh or for qiyam al layl and you're tired because the imam is reading the long juice of the Quran and you fasted all day and we're tired and we're more than a month, we're, we're deep into the month of Ramadan. One of the inspirations and incentives that you can think about in trying to push yourself forward is to say, well, I've eaten a number of dates and here I am. I weigh so many pounds. I weigh so many kilos. I weigh so many stones. And I'm standing on my two feet supporting all of those dates that I've been eating. My weight. So my weight in the mizan. Let me continue to stand. Fisa bilillah. Let that be your incentive. Let your incentive be, I'm standing up for Allah in Taraweeh. And the Prophet says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Man qama Ramadana imanan wa ihtisaba ghufira lahu ma taqaddama min dhambihi. Anyway, who stands up and he prays in Ramadan, believing in it and expecting his reward, he will be forgiven for his sins that went beyond, that came beyond in the past. So that individual, he's saying, My two feet and my brain. That's telling my two feet, stand up in obedience to Allah. Making al-qunut, al-qanitin, al-lillahi subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'm sure that you would agree to me, or you agree with me, that that standing up is bigger than one date. Giving da'wah in Allah. Ila la ilaha illallah. For an example, Yawmul Qiyamah, the hadith of the Bataqa. The man will come and on one side of his scroll, his scale, there will be all of his misgivings and his misdeeds and his mistakes and his masiyah and all of his sins. And on the other side of the scale, 
they will be la ilaha illallah. And la ilaha illallah is going to outweigh all of that. You can't tell me that the kalimah of a tawheed, that the urwat al wufqa, that the kalimah al tayyibah, you can't tell me that la ilaha illallah is not heavier in the mizan than one date that can save a person from the hellfire. So let us give da'wah to la ilaha illallah. Let us work by la ilaha illallah. Let us love the kalima of la ilaha illallah. Our relatives who don't know la ilaha illallah, what it really means, whether they're non-Muslims or Muslims who have misconceptions about it. You can't tell me, you can't get me to buy into. Teaching la ilaha illallah is not heavier than one day in the mizan. Also, at toba in Allah. There was a lady from the Ansar. May Allah be pleased with them who committed adultery. She came to Allah and she exposed. She came to the Prophet and exposed herself. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ya Rasulullah, asabtu haddim in hadudillah. I have done something where I should get capital punishment. Everyone knows the hadith, inshallah. Rasulullah established the had upon her. And she was stoned to death. After she, she was concealed what she did, but she told on her own self. One of the companions, he thought it was a terrible thing that she did. So he made a comment in being judgmental towards her. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi said to him, don't say that about her. That lady came and she exposed herself with Iman. If you take her toba and you put her toba in one side of the scale and the toba of 70 of the people of Al-Medin and the other side of the scale, her toba is going to outweigh their toba. You can't tell me that making toba to Allah from all of our mistakes and sins and indiscretions and misgivings is not heavy in the scales than a date. So make a toba in Allah. Make a dhikr in Allah. He says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Kalimatani khafifatani ala al-nisani thaqilatani fil mizani habibatani lil-rahmani Subhanallah wa bihamdihi Subhanallah al-azim There are two phrases, two words that are light on the tongue, but extremely heavy in the scales, and they are beloved by Ar-Rahman. And that's your statement in your dhikr, Subhanallah wa bihamdihi, Subhanallah al-Azim. They're heavy in the scale, much heavier than a date. So with that, inshallah, keep this right in front of your eyes for as long as you are alive. لا تحقرن شيئا من المعروف Don't consider anything as being insignificant, as long as it is ma'roof. May Allah Ta'ala accept it from us and you. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.